Hello, and welcome to a video presentation on identifying and writing proportions. Here's what you'll learn. How to find equivalent ratios and identify proportions. First of all, what are proportions? Well, proportions are just two ratios or fractions whose values are equal. Let's look at the ratios below. Consider 8 over 10 and 40 over 50. Are these ratios proportional? Do they equal each other? If both ratios represent the same value, they are proportional, and we would put an equal sign between them to indicate so. Let's look at a few ways to determine if these two ratios are in fact proportional. Method number one. We can find the decimal equivalent of each ratio. Ratios are just fractions and as such they are division problems. We can turn each ratio into a decimal by dividing the numerator by the denominator. Then if the decimals are equal the original ratios are proportional. So look at the first ratio 8 over 10. That's 8 divided by 10 so it gives us a decimal answer of 0 0.8. In the second ratio, 40 divided by 50 is also 0 0.8. Now since the decimals are equal to each other, that means the original ratios are proportional. Method number two. We can find equivalent fractions with common denominators. Find a common denominator and convert each ratio into its equivalent ratio using that common denominator. If the converted ratios end up being equal, then the original ratios are proportional. Now, since 10, the smaller numbered denominator, divides evenly into 50, the larger numbered denominator, that means we can use 50 as our common denominator. Then the second ratio gets to stay as 40 over 50. We won't have to change anything with it. But for the first ratio, we have to find an equivalent ratio with 50 as its denominator. Now to get 50 in the denominator of our first ratio, we'd have to multiply the 10 by 5. That means we have to multiply the numerator 8 by 5 as well. That makes the numerator of our equivalent ratio 40. And now it's easy to see our converted ratios are equal and that means the original ratios are proportional. Method number three. We can reduce both ratios to their simplest form. If both ratios reduce to the same fraction, then our original ratios are proportional. Now in the first ratio, eight and ten have a common factor of two. So let's go ahead and reduce that ratio, starting with the numerator eight, we divide it by 2, that gives us 4 in the numerator of our reduced ratio. Divide the 10 by 2, and that gives us 5 in the denominator. Now in the second ratio, 40 and 50 have a common factor of 10. So let's go ahead and divide the numerator 40 by 10. That's going to give us 4 in the numerator of our reduced fraction. And divide the denominator 50 by 10, that gives us 5. Now it's easy to see the simplest form of these ratios are equivalent. And that means the original ratios are proportional. Method number four. We can cross multiply the ratios and compare the products. Now this is my favorite method and it's the one we'll use for the rest of this lesson. In this method, if the cross products are equal, then the ratios are proportional. We start by multiplying the numerator of the first ratio, which is the number 8, with the denominator of the second ratio, the number 50. 8 times 50 is 400. Now, what do we do with this 400? Place that result under the ratio whose numerator you just multiplied by. So I'm going to put 400 under 8 over 10. Now multiply the denominator of the first ratio, the number 10, with the numerator of the second ratio, 
the number 40. 10 times 40 is 400 and that result goes underneath the other ratio. Now since the cross products are equal, 400 equals 400, that means the original ratios are proportional. Now let's determine if two ratios are proportional. I've got 27 over 30 and 9 over 10. Let's start by rewriting the ratios. 27 over 30 and 9 over 10. Using the cross product method we're going to multiply the 27 and the 10 together. That gives us 270 and that's going to go under the 27 over 30. Then we multiply 30 and 9 together. That also gives us 270. It goes under the other ratio. Now since the cross products are equal, 270 equals 270, that means our ratios are proportional. 27 over 30 and 9 over 10 are proportional. Now let's check 9 over 4 and 3 over 2. Let's start by rewriting the ratios. I'll write down 9 over 4 and 3 over 2. Now using the cross product method we're going to multiply the 9 and the 2 together. That gives us 18 and we're going to compare that with 4 times 3 which we know gives us 12. Now obviously the cross products are not equal. 18 does not equal 12. So that means our original ratios are not proportional. 9 over 4 and 3 over 2 are not proportional. Now let's create a ratio that's equivalent to 11 over 3 and then use those ratios to write a proportion. Let's start by writing down the given ratio. They gave us 11 over 13 in the problem. We need to create an equivalent ratio or equivalent fraction. Now there are an infinite number of equivalent ratios that we can create by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same number. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 10. I just happen to pick 10 and that will give us a new ratio. 11 times 10 in the numerator and 13 times 10 in the denominator. 11 times 10 gives us 110 in the numerator of our equivalent ratio. And 13 times 10 gives us 130 in the denominator of our equivalent ratio. So our proportion is going to be our original ratio 11 over 13 equals our equivalent ratio of 110 over 130. Now let's use the data in the table below to determine whether the ratio of butter to flour is proportional for both amounts of brownies. We should always start by understanding the data presented to us in a table. It's a table that's showing a couple of ingredients. It shows butter and flour used in making a brownie recipe. And the table displays various amounts of each of those ingredients for two amounts of brownies, 24 and 48 brownies. Now we're going to begin by setting up ratios for each corresponding brownie recipe. And the problem wants to know the ratio of butter to flour. So let's write butter in the numerator and flour in the denominator. I'm going to use decimals instead of the fractions that are in the table for the numbers in our ratios. So for 24 brownies it says that we need half a cup of butter, so I'm going to put 0 0.5 in the numerator, and 3 quarters of a cup of flour, so I'm going to put 0 0.75 in the denominator. For 48 brownies, we need 1 cup of butter, so I'll put a 1 in the numerator of our second ratio, and 1 and a half cups of flour, so I'll put 1.5 in the denominator. Now using cross products, we're going to multiply 0.5 and 1.5, and that gives us 0.75. Then we multiply 0.75 and 1, and that also gives us 0.75. Since our cross products are equal, that means the proportions are equal as well. So the ratios of butter to flour for both recipes are proportional. Congratulations! You've learned how to find equivalent ratios and identify proportions.